City Council, Mars and City Policemen, from our new employment uh, policy that won't allow a, uh, a city employee to run City Council. I am 100% in favor of the policy. Uh, if the timeline is correct that was in the margins of Bulletin, then I think we have an obligation to give elections the appearance of being fair uh, completely and totally. And uh, I would like for him to be excluded and then let the, let the voters decide. We think it's a, a good policy by they can vote for him or against him or if, if that's consideration for him. But once again, I am totally in favor of the policy. The time in here gives the illusion that uh, it was changed to prevent him from running. You have a motion. I have a motion I, to I exclude. Will, I will second your motion for the purpose of discussion. So we will now discuss. I, um, I actually got a call from Cable 18. I didn't even hear about it because I was working in Abington. Um, when I came back, I talked to LC. I talked to Officer Fincher. talked to Chief. Um, both said um, they told him on the 7th. He didn't turn his packet in, I think, to the 12th. That kind of is hard to say it's grandfathered in when they already had the policy before. I'm definitely in agreement with him running. Um, it is, would potentially be a conflict of interest. And I think that's what the big sticking point is. Um, I would say, let's wait until that happens. I wanted to ask Mr. City Manager, when, after the election, is it that following Tuesday that um, potentially- The next meeting will be the following. Council meeting. 15th. Is there, is there a way we can put a grace period until that next council meeting um, before any kind of action is taken? If he, if he were to win that night, does that mean by that policy he would automatically, I don't want to get too much into HR issues, but is, would that mean his termination if he were to win? Even though he would be elected, technically he would not he be take office till January. On council until January. So I would ask us to table it to see what happens after. Well, because it might not even be an issue that we. It we may need, need and my, my motion was just to cut him out, <laughs> make him the exemption, and from this point on, no city employee can run, uh, can serve on city council and be a city employee. This is definitely a conflict of interest. How do you, how do you do most of the budget? How do you get in his right. situation? How do you involve the school, school budget? School I budgets, mean, it's, it's right. a problem. But like, I say, we have to. And I talked to him, and he said he would be willing to do that. So. Okay. So I believe if you know, I, I printed the charter. Okay. So and the city charter does have reference to conflict of interest. Um, it also gives specific powers and duties of the city manager. Um, and so definitely there would be a conflict of interest. But it is my understanding that state code would prevent this council from giving a grandfather to an individual. Is that correct, Mr. Monday? Did I understand? It is special legislation. If you can't pass legislation that benefits a specific individual. Okay. I would like to amend Mr. Turner's motion. Is that, do we have to have further discussion in okay. order to amend? Well, I, I have another question. I mean, I have another statement if you don't mind. Go ahead, please. Mm -hmm. So I would okay. like to refer this to the State Conflict of Interest Council um, so that we have a um, state opinion on this. Um, to me, this is just out of order based on our charter but if we refer this to the state um, council, I think that would be a more fair uh, process to go down. And Tammy, before you amend, can I make a discussion on this motion? Okay. So I do agree with Danny. It's a terrible time, and it looks like it does look like it's, like it's perceived like oh, we did this for. Uh, gain. I mean, I know that that's not your intention because I've asked you, but that's certainly what it looks like. So <clears throat> I understand where Dan is coming from. But so I'm looking at this from a business standpoint. Did LC file a complaint with HR? Can we ask that on council? I know that's the HR issue, that's but, HR the, issue. But, but in my in my 
I want to know was is this something that LC is bringing up rather than Danny bringing it up? I get it, Danny. Like it makes us look bad. Like I mean, it makes well, us look like well, LC doing... can't make a motion. <laughs> well, my point is, LC can file a complaint with HR because he's employed with the city. So if he did that, did he follow the proper protocols? That's that's just one thing I'm wondering about. What, what, what do you mean he, complaint? What do you mean about this? Yeah, about like like if, okay. if, if, if okay. did LC file a complaint when this happened because. And that is a personnel matter that we yeah. can discuss. So, but, but, okay. So, I got you. I, I will cease that conversation. LC did state that regardless, he was going to run, whether or not it was a policy or not. So, that's also a, a moot point because if he said he was going to run anyway, whether it was a policy or not, that means he does, you know, he, he's going to run anyway. So, I also just took the Conflict of Interest Act. And I do think that we should refer to an outside entity that has no bias, that doesn't care about who's running for city right. council in Martinsville. Right. And they can make a decision. I also wanted to ask, I know with community colleges, there's like a Virginia Department of Human Resources. Do we have a Department of Human Resources in our local government or, or some type of employment commission or somebody that we can ask that's a higher entity to see? Come on, the EEOC? Not in the local government. No. Gotcha. Well, I'm, I am thinking like an EOC. Mm -hmm. or, or I'm just looking for some type of employment specialist, something that's a free consultation to tell us what do they feel about this particular policy. Um, There's certainly many employment law specialists out there. I don't know that we are going to be able to find one to do a free consultation. <laughs> but So I appreciate So I'm going to go back to what I got at VML, the Conflict of Interest Act. I'd like to see what they have to say because that's no bias business they don't care about who's running for city council let's figure it out Ms. Peterson. yes um, so I, I I would like to amend the motion but I'd also like to make some comments so can I amend the discussion motion? period so shall I make so does First your discussion comments. pertain to your amendment or does it pertain to Mr. Turner's amendment both. Motion. I mean, motion. Both. Um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and make my comments first. All right. Um, and they are lengthy, but I've done my research as well. So I, I do believe uh, that that new employment policy, um, it, it worries me greatly, the timing of it. I know we've already discussed that. Um, Mr. Jones had already begun collecting signatures um, before that time period and I do think being a city of 13,000 many many people knew that that was already taking place um, and I do understand our city manager can make this policy without our approval um, however I do want to say this uh, I have had discussion and I've reviewed emails from Mr. Pritchett and other legal counsel and I just want to paraphrase <coughs> for the public some of the information that I learned uh, the city manager, and I know uh, Mayor Lawson was talking about our city charter, um, the city manager does, and city attorney do not have the authority in the city charter or city code to make a policy on the forfeiture of employment for a city employee subsequently elected to council. The General Assembly has not authorized in the city charter a provision prohibiting city employees from serving on city council. The city charter, chapter 2, sections 3 and 4, establish eligibility to hold the office of councilman and defines conflict of interest as it applies to service as a city council member. The new employment policy, as Mayor Lawson referenced, contains due to conflict of interest. However, we did not define the conflict of interest. And in relation to the definition in Section 4 of Chapter 2 of the City Charter, relative to a city council member a conflict of interest refers to interest in the profits of any contract or work in addition the state and local government conflicts of interest act exempts from coverage a member's interest in a contract of employment provided his employment first began prior to the member becoming a member of the governing body so i guess all that i have learned um, is if to me we want to make this kind of change to the city employee policy um, from my understanding, we would need to make a city charter amendment change, which would of course have to be voted on by the city council, and it would still not apply to a regular or non-office employee whose employment precedes election to city council. 
Um, and I know that our city attorney and others may disagree because this is my individual research and learning from talking with uh, Mr. Pritchett and some others. Um, so that's what I've learned thus far. So, um, and then once we finish this discussion, I will amend the motion. Let me bring back the charter change. We can't do that. General Assembly's got to do that. Well, then you vote first. And then the yeah. General yeah. Assembly yes. So. so you're on that. Oh, I would like to make a motion to remove the new employee policy adopted by the city manager, section 7.8.1e, effective immediately, and defer this matter for further discussion and research by council and city manager, and possibly to a non-biased organization. I would like to... What, no? Oh, yes. Yeah, Mr. Yeah. Turner, do you accept her commitment? Yes. Well, I don't. <clears throat> so I don't second it. So, we I, will go back to Mr. Turner's original motion. Is there further discussion? <coughs> yes. I would like to offer that we table this motion until we're able to hear from the Conflict of Interest Act. We're able to hear from other agencies to see what they feel. So that way, it's not just Tammy versus the city or, or Ashby Pritchett versus the city or whoever. It's an independent state agency who, again, I'm say, I, I hate to say this, but who doesn't care what's going on locally. Let's ask the state organization to give us their guidance so it doesn't look like we're, anybody is showing favoritism. We're not being transparent. What's more transparent than asking an, somebody else. The, count, the Conflict of Interest Act organization? And that was basically my amendment, but I'll, it was I thought to move. A, I thought it was it. to. And then to further discussion. Well, I'd like to table it until we get there. Well, Mine was not to table it. Your amendment died for lack of a second. Yes. Okay, so oh. in Chapter 2, Section 4, it states... Oh, wait a minute, your amendment did pass because I seconded it. No, you made the motion. She, she asked you to second. Did you accept I, it? I accepted I, her I amendment. seconded it, but I didn't accept okay. it. Okay, all right. It's okay, I'll make a new motion. <laughs> okay, it says... Except for the purpose of inquiry, the council and its members, so long as the city manager form of government obtains deal with the administrative service solely through the city manager, and neither the council nor any member thereof shall have authority to give orders to any of the subordinates of the city manager, either publicly or privately. And then under the section 5, chapter 5, section 2, which refers to the city manager, specific power and duties. Uh, it is um, to exercise supervision and control over all departments and division created therein or made. They're herefore created by the council and have general supervision over all public improvements, works, and undertaking, except as otherwise provided by the charter. It also says to see that city officers and employees as the council shall determine as necessary the proper administration of the city be appointed and may be removed by the city manager except those in the legal and judicial departments of the clerical and other tenants of the council that the city manager shall report his appointment and removal to the council at the next meeting and so forth so it, it says in here that basically you can't have a person on council that can give direction to the city manager but anyway I, I do believe that it is in our best interest to make sure that everything is on the up and up that we refer this to the state um, uh, COIA council I move, to move the question let's move it get it over okay away. the question's been called all in favor of Mr. Turner's motion please say aye aye those opposed aye aye Mr. Martin I'm sorry, what did you say? How'd you go? Um, Mr. Turner's motion? I'm waiting, I'm <laughs> waiting on to make the motion that what Jennifer actually said. Like well, you got a motion okay, on that. We, 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 we have a motion on that. We have to vote. And then we'll we have to vote. And then we can have another motion. Because Ms. Pearson's going to make another motion. So Ms. Bowles is going to make a motion. So do you wish to vote yes or no? Or you can abstain. I'll take it. Um, let me explain why. Because there's a lot of people in here that think 
whether it's true or not, uh, and talking with um, city employees, LC's name was not used in any email. They asked a very general question, um, so it wasn't targeted at him. Um, perception sometimes, people think that is the reality. And so the, even the way the newspaper article, when I first read it, I got very frustrated. I said, let me pause, I'll come back, and actually talk to everybody. The reason why I say, to Jennifer's point, is takes it out of the hands of anybody local and gives it to a state agency, not that doesn't care, but has no stake in anybody winning or losing. Um, that means that once they give us the opinion, that means if LC should win, then we need to come back and make sure no retaliation comes on him. And so if they come back and say, to Ms. Pearson's point, um, that it's not a conflict. Okay, we'll, we'll go with that and then let's, mm -hmm. let's talk about changing this policy or maybe grandfather it in um, exactly. for him. But you know, what, this might not even be an issue mm -hmm. after November 8th. Yeah. So, um, you so, know, so, so actually, I don't think it's for us to say this is right, this is wrong. Right. I think we need to refer it to get an impartial. So we got one for, one against, and one abstention. So, <laughs> okay, so Ms. Pearson, how did you go? Um, uh, no to Mr. Turner's. Okay. And Ms. Balls? No. Okay, okay. so that, that um, for like a majority. All right, so, I've got more comments to make. Okay, but. We won't. Well, I have a new motion. Yeah. She has a new motion. Okay. So I would like to make a motion to remove the new employee policy adopted by the city manager, section 7.8.1E, effective immediately, and defer this matter for further discussion and research by council and city manager, which may include an outside organization. And the reason, oh, okay, sorry, I can't discuss it yet. Sorry, that's my motion. Is there a second? Your motion will die for lack of a second. Okay. I'd like to make a motion. Okay. I'd like to make a motion to direct the city administration to send correspondence to the Conflict of Interest Act Council in the state of Virginia and ask what is their perception on this policy and to get a reading from it. Also to reach out to employment law and research that and I'd like to have that information brought back to council because I've had citizens come up to me and it makes sense to me to me with my limited knowledge I'm not an expert but if LC reports to the chief the chief reports, reports to, to the city manager but then LC is, is over top the of the city manager business wise that that's problem. not how businesses work you can't have somebody that's a factory worker over top of the CEO on being on the board of directors. And I'm not equating that, but I'm just saying if it's a factor, you know, whatever. Like, that's just how it goes. You can't be a police officer and tell the city manager what to do. I, I think it's a conflict. But again, the fair thing to do, the legal thing to do, is act the, ask the Conflict of Interest Act organization because that's what they're made for when times like these. Let's take the, let's take the election out of it. I mean, I'm really concerned as if I don't understand why it's coming up now, right? If this was a big yeah, issue, yeah. yeah it, it, if this was an issue in June, why wasn't it brought up in June? That's right. Yeah, so that's what I'm confused about. So that's why I asked, like, okay, so let, let's keep it down. So Ms. Bowles has a motion that we turn this matter over to the Conflict of Interest Act. And I'm in agreement with Tammy on that, that we should ask. A, a higher organization. That's oh, absolutely. So we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Any further discussion? Yes. Um, for the public sake um, and <coughs> for our sake, making sure if LC wins on the eighth, and again he doesn't take office. He wouldn't take office till January. There is no kind of repercussions to him. There is no issues going at him. That and we revisit this language which I don't even really agree with revisiting language that city managers made because that becomes a conflict in and of itself. But to make sure that nothing happens to where something can come back on LC to where he would lose his job. Right. And I will revisit going to Danny's 
point, at, the, at least allow him grandfathered in. Um, so we have a motion. I have two comments. Uh, first, I understand the whole hierarchical um, matter that um, Vice Mayor Bowles talked about and the possible conflict of interest. I understand that completely. However, there could be repercussions if we are to go by the employee policy statement that was created. So uh, if we do not remove that from our employee handbook, there will definitely be repercussions for Mr. Jones if he wins, if we are to go by the employee handbook. Well, I would certainly hope that we would have... Again, he wouldn't take office until January. January. Still, there would be repercussions right. no, no, from no. the employee handbook. No, no, what I'm saying is no. he hasn't taken office yet, even though he's won. That means, and if you were to listen to what I said, I said, let's revisit, if he wins, then we revisit that next council meeting, we revisit the language in the book. So why wouldn't we go ahead and move forward to do this now? Because right. it might not be an issue. Okay. When I say it might not be an issue, let, 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 me, let me explain. It might not be an issue because he might not win. And so that policy needs to stay. We just don't want anything to happen to LC. Yeah, I agree totally that the policy is a good policy and needs needs to be there. I'm just saying the perception that it was changed just uh, at the eleventh hour to uh, to penalize him. penalize him yeah. for running. Right. It, it just it, uh, an election has to have no appearance of wrongdoing. So right. that I was, don't believe the policy should stay as it is currently worded. Well, I agree with the policy, um, but, with exception um, to him. Um, what so what do you want to do different how it's worded? I'm okay, okay it. so okay. Well, we have a motion and we have a second, and that, that is a different discussion. Right. So um, any further discussion? Okay, all in favor of the vice mayor's motion, please say aye. Aye. Uh, uh, any opposed? No. Okay. So your comments. All right. Yes, sir. <laughs> um, the Wreath Across America program, we've received a number of uh, contributions. If he should win on November 8th, if he should win on November 8th, immediately come in with some kind of language saying how he can actually represent the city as a council person and keep his job at the same time. Uh, I don't know what that language looks like. I've never seen this done before. Um, where council person actually has work yeah, for the city and be on council. I was trying to research some areas. The only thing we got a couple there, constitutional there officers. The only, the only reason, the only way I saw that was with constitutionals. Um, yeah. But there is a clear, direct um, difference because the boss is that constitutional officer. Thing. Tammy, oh, I, no, I'm going to be speaking. You, your motion was designed to keep the city from getting sued, right? Uh. I honestly had not thought about getting sued, to be yes. quite honest with you. My main motion was to... Mr. Let me get Jennifer on this. Jennifer, did, can't, Tammy's motion may have kept the city from getting sued, you know, about backing out of it. Is that something you were thinking about? Tammy and I essentially have the same exact motion. Okay, but in other words, in other words if... I mean, he might have a lawsuit, to, you know, because... It, we're we're going to be discussing this on November 15th. All right. So... Yeah, I, I think the best thing I said was give Elsie a job at the uh, school system. Ask Dr. Tally, will he hire him? That eliminates everything. Is that not a good idea, Charles? Say it. Say it's a good idea. We're listening. Say it's a good idea, Charles. Say it for the public. Say it, Charles. <laughs> Say it, Charles. But right. no, and seriously though, I mean, I'm joking with you and giving you a hard time, but you know that's a that's a great alternative, right? So that way it eliminates any potential possibility of conflict of interest. We're asking an outside counsel who has no ties to anyone in the community. They're going to give a legal opinion. These are lawyers that are just um, given by the state, so that's great. And then if LC's hired on by um, the sit the schools, and I do want to clarify, we had a citizen tonight that asked. Was he a police officer? So he's a student resource officer. So that's what LC does in the school system. So if he's hired in the schools as an SRO, that's a great alternative. Okay. And I do want to say that I had absolutely nothing to do with the policy. It's nothing for me to, I know, you know perception is people are you saying. You everybody but, booed in the audience. Well, it was three people. And they, they, they didn't boo about me. They booed about they didn't like the policy. They felt like it was poor timing. And I can agree with them. Very poor timing. Looks awful. But we've never had somebody run who works at the city 
who ran for city council. People talk about, what's the guy's name, Charles? Um, Stroud. Yeah, they talk about Mark Stroud, but he worked for the sheriff's office. So the sheriff is a constitutional. Constitutionals don't report to the city manager. So therefore, it's not the same conflict of interest that would allow itself with LC. And I do want to say it is a good policy. The policy makes sense, but it's quite unfortunate that it was done during this particular time. But I'm assuming, based off the conversations that I've had with city administration, conver let me show this in case somebody's doing <laughs> What's wrong with Jay? Conversations that um, <laughs> I lost my train of thought. <laughs> Conversations that I've had with city administration as well as other individuals. It's the right policy in place. Terrible timing, and it may be because it had never happened before. But Charles, I, I did I talk to you? Appreciate. It. I heard you bashing me all the time, man. I am not bashing you all. Yeah, that's what people keep calling me and say. I'm, I'm not gonna watch it, man. I'm just trying to work on our relationship. Don't Facetime me at 10:30. <laughs> All right, let's see what Chad. Chad. One, one of the things uh, when we just heard that one with, with, with LC, I mean, wouldn't he have a suit on his hand? You know, the, the fact that they changed that? I, number one, I'm not a lawyer. Uh, I'll say that. Um, and even with speaking with LC, he did admit that they told him January 7th. Now, it is very frustrating to go get all those signatures, and then all of a sudden this policy comes up. Um, but I did talk with police. When they asked city administration, there wasn't a name used that just said if an individual were to run who worked in this office, would it be an issue? You know, they, they kind of, they didn't have anything in the policy. Yeah. And then they came back and came up with a policy because ultimately, and that's why I said tonight, if LC wins, we will have to figure out how he can be on council and keep his job because it is a conflict of interest. The law changed for him. What do you mean the law? I mean the, the rule changed, or you know. It, it, it does appear that it it, it does seem like that, right? But it been for. Well, here's the here's the issue. They didn't. If they would have said they used a name in the email, then it's going at LC. Did you hear everybody boo? Oh yeah. Oh definitely. I mean, perception is reality. So I mean, it, it would what appear. Would you think? As far as if you right there weren't watching this, I would, especially because of the community that LC comes from, I would definitely think it's the city coming after me. Um, especially seeing some things that's happened in the past. Um, definitely seen some things that's happened in the past. So that's why we're kind of like putting a focus, special look on it. Right, and and that's why when I got back from Abington from work, um, I wanted to talk to him and I wanted to talk to everybody, all the parties involved, and, and then spoke with LC, and I said that. At first, I was going to go right along with what Danny said, but I'm loving what Jennifer said. Let's take it out of any kind of perception that it would be anybody local has any control over that. Let's give it to a state entity, a state body that has no stake in who wins or who loses, and then they make the decision on whether or not this is a conflict or not. I wonder what Aaron's going to say. It's no telling. Uh, <laughs> Let's go check it out. Thank, no telling. thank you. Gonna go check out here. I'm gonna probably um, since he's talking to somebody, we'll take a quick wait. We'll see if we can get a comment from Aaron. Oh no! Don't. All right, we got Aaron here. What would you like to say about what we saw tonight? Um, I definitely want to leave it to whatever wrangling is going to go on. But the one thing, I was just speaking with a couple who've been going door to door with me, mm -hmm. and I heard the same thing on Saturday. Actually, when you saw me out. There is a byproduct of this um, amendment to the employee code, and I really support Tammy's motion for this reason. There's this understanding that a lot of people have gained that because of this addition to the employee handbook that LC must drop out of the race. So a lot of people are asking me when I go out and knock on doors, oh, it's a shame we can't vote for LC anymore. And uh, the couple who was just here said that they had, they spoke with a couple. So it's confusion. It is, that is confusion. There was a couple who voted, and they voted for me, and only voted for me and didn't vote for LC because they thought LC had to drop out. Mm. And so I'm really worried about the impact stuff like that has. And so it goes to show, I understand, you know, the arguments that were made from each side, but you really got to put time and thought into this, consider the timing. So I do not know why it surfaced so late. Um, I think just the story blew LC, if you know him, and I'm not going to speak for him. He's a, a grown man who knows what he's doing. He's not the kind of guy to go run and yell or go to media or anything. He wants to play things the right way. Um, so I don't think it's his fault or anything like that, that it took so long to come out. I think someone got wind of the story and was like, Excuse me. Yeah. Yep. It was a great story. The Bulletin has been killing it recently. They put out some really, really great stories that have benefited Martinsville. Right. Well, 
I mean, we're watching the, the, the process here, and, and then we had Tammy who said, let's back out of it, which might have protected the city from a lawsuit. Yeah. And they didn't, they, didn't, they didn't heed that. Yeah, I don't know. You know, because I'm not a lawyer, and, you know, it's so easy for us. It's like, man, that's definitely wrong or that's definitely right, and you just don't know till you get in a courtroom. I've gone through the charter. I've gone through the state code. Um, I would have removed it to protect the city and just in, from a risk mitigation perspective. Because when you're city council, that's what you're supposed to do, right? Keep us from lawsuits, right? You would you would hope so, but I mean, you know, our track record's not very good in the right. lawsuit department. Right. Yeah. I mean, you watched that tonight. I don't want you to name names and stuff, but just what did you feel? How did you feel about it, watching that? I think everyone has had time to digest this. So, you know, it was a little bit performative. Everyone already thought about where they stood on it, what they wanted to say about it. I think the real story was the reaction from the crowd. Um, the boo? Yeah, well, it's just in general, too, in speaking with people out and about, um, this has, if Elsie didn't have monumental support before this, he sure does now. And I do think there's this sense of, he had already started getting petitions, he was very clearly going to be um, a credible opponent to current government. You know, it does look a little bit weird, particularly when you look at the actual city comments in the Martinsville Bulletin story, it, sh it sounded like we heard someone in the room from the rumor mill, someone might be running, and we need to put an end to that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. All right, well, thank you so much for talking with us. Yeah, Have a great night. Okay. See ya. You got to get into the wrangle? <laughs> yeah, well, we can talk I mean, about this. Good, I mean, but wouldn't that be an option, SROs being employed by schools? And Aaron, I'm not saying... Let me be clear, no. Charles. Don't say on your show that we're that we're, we're trying good. to argue or we're trying we're to good. do anything. This is like a legitimate like conversation. I'm just listen. Okay. But you, you, want, I mean, you want him to answer the answer the, I mean, the, the school idea. Asking. The school yeah. idea. What would you like? About? I love out of the box ideas, so I do not think it's a terrible idea. I think we need LEOs yeah. more than anything. So I've got a unique perspective on this, which I'll tell you. In a city of thirteen thousand people. We've all got some kind of conflict. This one is definitely more direct than others. I get it. But we've had an analog or an adjacent one with constitutional officers, their employees working in city government. So we've had something that's comparable to this. Where I'm at is we've got serious LEO issues, and our police are responsible for so much of our quality of life. But they've got new things that, were, that are brought here that no police force anywhere has really been able to contend with successfully, like drug-related homelessness. So his perspective on the council it's valuable. Um, so that's one way I look at it. But I do want to hear all the langling, wrangling because, you know, I'm not a politics guy. I haven't served in government. I want to hear what other people do have to say about it. Right. Yep. Anything else? Charles, don't bash me tomorrow. I keep getting caught. I, no, just, I just play what you say, Jennifer. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just giving you a hard time. I'm in a good mood. All right. Okay. Okay, Charles. I'm all right, good. All right. Let me get your comments. I know you talked spoke to the bulletin on this particular issue. Um, yes, yeah, so, so I, I spoke to the bulletin just to kind of give the chain of events mm -hmm. as far as anything, as far as positions goes or what okay. the city council does. Can you just share so what I, you I'll, share I'll, with I'll, the bulletin? I'll, I'll, I will let the politicians deal with politics. I got you. I got you. <laughs> but, but just, yeah, so, so, you know, we, we just only really want to comment on political issues that, that are directly involving crime. And, you know, this is a, a, a human. But one of the things, LC said that he was, y'all couldn't get him some shoes. Is that actually true? Uh, he, he never asked me or any other administrators for that, so I, I can't say what so was you say said. It didn't so get so asked? We, we have a, another person that's in charge of equipment and stuff, and um, I could foresee, I, I can't say this is the case, I could foresee it being done in jest, but um, I was never, I never received a request for that. Um, you know, that's, Would that be the proper, would you be the shoe guy? No. Who would it's one of the fellow officers that's in charge okay. of the equipment. Right, but I mean, that perception is out there that it's a man asked for a pair of shoes and was denied a pair of shoes because they thought, said, you're not going to be working too much longer. No, no, that, that's, that's not the case. That's what LC. And, and, and in fact, there's been some other provisions that we, we've got records to show that, that, you know, actually LC has received additional um, training and stuff like that. And so, no, Elsie's not being treated any, any different as far as anybody any other employees. In fact, he's received some additional uh, supplemental training because of his position as an SRO that uh, not every officer is, is available to get. Um, he just recently went to a conference out in Virginia Beach that was a part of the SROs. Both SROs went out there. No, no, there's, there's no difference uh, in him and uh, any other, either one of our other SROs or any other employee, he's... Uh, How about the shoe issue? Have you, are you sure he's got enough shoes? 
if he needs a pair of shoes, all he has to do is come and ask, and I'll get him a pair of shoes. Uh, that's, well, that's I don't, I don't, yeah, that, I, I really don't know where that came from. Came from him. You no, know, I mean that as far as what, what all that's going on, and you, you know, that's that, that's something all he has to do is come and ask. Just recently, got him several, uh, quite a bit of equipment that he'd been asking for. And how much uh, of those shoes cost? By the way, I have no idea, uh, to be honest with you, and, and it depends upon. Which so we offer more than one type of shoe for the officers depending upon what what they want and so uh, some like uh, low top shoes some like the high top shoes to give it more ankle support so you, you know that that's what I say I can't hundred bucks I, I don't even know if it's that to be honest with you it's uh, All right. All right. Uh, you know we, we we get things on a, on a government price so um, right. so it's most of the time it's cheaper than retail so.